guys, so this will be my, my fourth video on my Abstract Algebra playlist, and today I'm going to be talking about general linear groups and essentially what they are, um, really just a definition of them. So a general linear group is defined as it's a set of m, the set of all n by n invertible matrices. The keyword invertible is very important. If they're not invertible, they does not form a group. So it's a set of all n by n invertible matrices, um, which are square, of course, um, whose elements come from a field. So for now, just think of a field as a real complex number. So just, you know, real matrices are complex matrices and um, under multiplication. This forms a group. And of course, n is greater than 2. Your dimension has to be greater than 2. Um, so let's show this as a group. So, you know, let's just denote our elements um, G1, you know, just an element of this group, and G2 is an um, element of, of, of an, another element of this group. And of course, I'm just showing it uh, for M2 two by 2, and let's just, you know, stick to the reals for now. Um, it works just as well for complex numbers, but let's work for the reals for now. Um, and just to make sure that, uh, just to get the point across. Um, and of course, you can approve this n by n, but it's easiest to approve for 2 by 2 because there's less, um, less symbols to worry about. Um, and so let's, of course, check this if there's closure. You know, of course, if we have, you know, A times, well, if we want to do matrix multiplication, let's just, you know, let's just, let's just go right, go through all the steps. So we have G1 times G2, we're going to have, we're going to have A times E in the first, you know, position. And we're going to have, so now we're going to have B times G in the second one. And we're going to have C times E. And then we're going to have, um, sorry, C times F. And then D times H. So essentially, um, and now this is a, tr a common trick uh, that we can use for groups. Whenever we have um, like two elements uh, that we can combine into one, so uh, because we know it's closed, um, so like, we know the reals are closed in their multiplication, so we can just give these special names. So let's just say A times E, let's just call that alpha. We're essentially introducing a dummy variable, and um, this is really a very neat trick, uh, for, especially for matrices, uh, to show that they are groups. So you have A times, uh, let's just say E times E is equal um, to A, and, um, and by the way, this E, just to be clear, is not the identity here. It's just some arbitrary element of the matrix, not just not mixing it up. And of course, so let's just call it alpha. Let's call B times uh, G, let's just call it, I don't know, beta, I'm just, you know, again, introducing more dummy variables. Um, and this works because you have both of these are reals and this is also real, so we're not making any kind of mistake when we do this. And of course, let's just say C times F, let's call that, I don't know, phi, and let's just call D times H, um, well, let's, I guess we call it, uh, um, well, I guess omega, why not, what omega? So just arbitrary dummy variables. And so we can see that G1 times G2, let's call our, let's call a product of that G3. Um, and so we're going to get alpha, beta, phi, and omega. Uh, let's write that a little neater, just so it's clear. So we get alpha, beta, gamma, and uh, no, alpha, beta, phi, omega. So these are our elements. And of course, we know that this is closed because all of these are still from this field up here, or real numbers. Uh, for now, we're working with real numbers for a field. So all of these are real, and so we know that it's closed under multiplication. So that's a good first step. So now, what about associativity? And of course, this is going to be very, very messy to uh, calculate by hand. But of course, um, if we want to show it's associative, we just simply just have to do come up with, a, with a, another element, um, uh, G1, G2. Uh, and then of course, we have G1 times G2 in parentheses times G3. We have G1 times G2 times G3 with the parentheses around the 3 and the 2. And again, we can really go through this, but this is the whole idea. And so um, the, we can go through this, but it's very messy. Um, so the whole idea we would have, we'd have to show that, you know, we have like A, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to denote the, I'm gonna denote the elements with subscripts 1. Um, so we have A1, B1, C1, D1, and we have to multiply that by um, A2, B2, um, C2, D2. And we have to do this first times, um, and of course, and then of course, now we have to do it times the third matrix, which would be A3, um, B3, C3, D3. And you can see this can get tedious. So we have to do these two matrices first, multiply this one, and show that um, if you did, if you did, if you put parentheses instead the first two. Let's make sure. So, uh, if you did, if you did it like this, it's the same thing as if you put parentheses around matrix one, matrix two. Matrix one, matrix two. Basically, all I'm trying to show they're associated. In order to show they're associated, you have to go through this whole uh, busy work of calculus. So it's a very messy uh, way to show it. 
But it does work out. You can you know, do it yourself if you don't believe me. So that's how you would show it's associative. But now, of course, is there an identity element? And of course, there is, because what would be the matrix identity element? It's simply just going to be I. Um, and by I, I mean the identity matrix. So for 2 by 2, we're going to have 0, 1, uh, or sorry, 1, 0, um, 0, 1. That's our identity matrix for 2 by 2. And of course, you know, if we have A, B, C, D times 1, 0, 0, 1, um, that's, of course, just going to give us A, B, C, D. It's an identity matrix, you know, just from linear algebra, you know this. So the identity matrix exists, and because they are all invertible, every matrix is invertible, we know that the there exists an inverse for every single matrix that equals the identity. And so that is why this forms a group. And so just to recap, we went through closure, which is just, you know, G1 times G2. Um, to show it's closed, introduce dummy variables. Uh, it's very helpful to prove that. And um, we have to, of course, prove that there is an identity, the identity element, which is the identity matrix. And in general, if you wanted for, for N by N, you know, it's just simply, you know, um, you know, one, da, 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 one, and then, you know, zero in all the other positions. So that's how you prove, that's how you would prove this for, for N by N. Um, but for two by two, it's, it works, it works the same for two by two, three by three, four by four. The proofs are exactly the same. It's just more work to kind of grind through it all. So, um, and so, it's a, so we, for associative, it's the messiest one. You have to have three matrices and you have to prove that they are associative. Um, and, and of course, there's identity matrix, which is, you know, that's the identity element. And of course, there are inverses because they are all invertible. That's the whole key. If they were not invertible, they wouldn't have that property and they wouldn't form a group. And so this is exactly why um, this, the general linear group, which is defined as a set of all n by n matrices on the field under multiplication with n greater than 2, is a group. So that's, um, it's, it's for a lot of take-in. This, this one is definitely a, a little bit more abstract example than the ones from before. So just kind of practice to get a feel for it and um, go through this video again if you have to. But that's kind of essentially how you prove that's a group. So I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in the next one.